Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace, blessings, and mercy be upon you all. Welcome to the second episode of Dawah Thursdays. In our episode today, we are going to look at one of the prerequisites of performing Dawah. Now, that prerequisite in itself is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you might be asking yourself, Brother Ashraf, why is this a prerequisite to performing Dawah? Now, fundamentally, we need to understand that when we do Dawah, we do so to call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't know Allah, we don't have a relationship with Allah, how could we expect to call others towards Him, right? And therefore, we know that actually knowing Allah is the entire foundation of our Dawah. We cannot call to Allah if we do not know Allah. And what might this mean to know Allah? Now there are three major points that we're going to focus on today in knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first one is the oneness of Allah's Lordship. And we find a beautiful verse within the Holy Quran in chapter 39 verse 62, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the creator of all things, and He is the maintainer of everything. So fundamentally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the maintainer and the provider and the creator and the sustainer of absolutely everything inside this universe. And there's no one beside Him in equality that can proclaim the same. He is above everything and all else. He is all powerful. He is all knowing and self-sufficient. And this brings us into the second point, which is the oneness of Allah's names and attributes. And there's another beautiful verse within the Holy Quran in chapter 42 verse 11 where it says that there is nothing like Him, and He is the hearer and the seer of all things. And we're going to be looking at these names and attributes a little bit later when we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we bring that message forward to the people that we speak to and how this singles Him out for all worship, for all submission, and that it declares in itself that He is one without a second. And this brings us to the third point that we're going to be focusing on, the oneness of Allah's worship. And there's a beautiful verse within the Holy Quran in chapter 51 verse 56 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the following, I did not create the jinn and mankind except for my worship. And this is a very good point to bring forward to open up a conversation with another individual. And when we speak a little bit more regarding the initiations in a later program, then I'm going to be discussing this in depth as to how you can walk up to anybody and start a conversation with them. So when we do Dawah, we call upon these three major points. And fundamentally, we know that the opposite of this is shirk, associating partners with the Creator. And there's a verse within the Holy Quran in chapter 4, verse 48, where it says that indeed Allah does not forgive associations with Him, but He forgives what is less than that from whom He wills. And he who associate others with Allah has certainly committed a grievous sin. And the same message can also be found within the Quran, chapter 4, verse 116. So we know that the greatest sin in life is to associate partners with God. And once we know Allah, once we have Him within our lives, there is a great effect that comes with it and a lot of benefits. And would like to share some of these with you today. So one of these points is that we gain dignity and self-esteem because we learn to not bow down before anybody except for the Almighty Creator. And we gain that understanding. The second point is that we gain humbleness and humility because we come to an understanding that we can't do anything without the Almighty Creator. We also learn morality because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a third party, an objective source that can teach us between what is right and wrong. We don't need to make those choices for ourselves. And currently what we find in some societies is that they struggle with morality because how do you define what is right and what is wrong? What is harmful and not harmful? And ultimately, we trust in Allah. We trust in His guidance because we know that He is truth. It gives us ultimate peace and ultimate happiness. Because once you know Allah, you know happiness. Because you know that no matter what happens to you in this life, that you might lose absolutely everything, but that you will still have the most important thing, which is Allah. We also gain a lot of optimism and total reliance. Because by knowing Allah, we know that He will always look out for us. That He will always bestow upon us what is best for us. Even if we can't see the full picture. Even if we can't see where the situation is going to lead us to. And we trust in that. Because we know that Allah will not burden us beyond what we can bear. And we also gain a lot of bravery. Because we know that we don't have to fear anything within this dunya. Within this world. Because the creator of everything in this world is the one that we fear. And we submit to Him alone. Thus, in conclusion, we find that knowing Allah is fundamental to our da'wah because this is whom we are calling to. We are calling people towards the Almighty Creator, the Sustainer and Provider. 
I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you feel like there's something you would like to share with us regarding your relationship with Allah or how he has molded you into the person that you are, please share it in the comment section below and let us support each other to grow closer to Allah. I look forward to seeing you at the next episode. All the best of blessings to you and your family. Jazakallah khair.